Hello, I'm Mr. Hinkst, and in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to use the population view for Avita Ed. So this is the one that you'll probably spend most of your time in. Uh, it's going to have some graphical information for you, um, some data sets that will be collected uh, real time over here, and then our Petri dish is this big black square in the middle. So I'm going to show you how to set that up first by clicking on the Setup tab at the very top. And what you'll notice is this is where you can change the size of your Petri dish. Uh, small Petri dishes run much quicker. Uh, large Petri dishes got to process lots of information. They take much more time. You can also change your mutation rates uh, that occur within the DNA replicating inside of our little vidians. You can either use the slider back and forth to change it, or I just like typing it in. So if I wanted to go with the 0.1 mutation rate, just click 0.1 and enter, and it slides it there automatically. What other things are available to you here are your resources that your videos will be competing over. So you have your easy to attain resources, your moderately all the way up to your brutally hard to attain. Uh, the harder they are to get, the more energy the videos can get. So there is some benefit for evolving those functions. And you can include them in your Petri dish or not include them in your Petri dish just by clicking on them like so. Uh, another handy feature that I use a lot here is when, after how many updates you would like to pause your run, uh, you can program this here to do it automatically as opposed to trying to, you know, stop at a thousand exactly. So I always click there, and then if I wanted to go with that a thousand, I just hit enter, and we're good to go. So now I can do a run. So I'll click back on over to the map view, and I will just go down here and click run. Well, I didn't bring on over my ancestor. So there's two different ways that you can bring organisms into the virtual Petri dish here. You can click and drag from here, so you would just click on your ancestor, and you can bring them on here. Um, I like to be a little more purposeful when I put mine in, so if I drag them over back here in the setup area, my ancestor, and then click back over to map, it centers it perfectly. So it does a better job of spacing it, unless, of course, you're trying to throw some randomness into it, and then you can drag it however you like. So now that we've got an organism in the Petri dish and all the environmental factors are set up, so we'll just click a run. And what you'll notice is down here in the bottom left is our number of updates. So you can think of that kind of like generations. Uh, you'll notice there's lots of pretty colors on the screen, and that is showing you, in this case, uh, relative fitness. Uh, relative fitness is a, com is a measurement of uh, metabolic rate and gestation and how they compare. So the overall uh, fitness of the organism in that environment. Uh, you can change those if you like. Uh, it can give you some pretty useful information. For the most part we stay with fitness and then eventually I'll show you uh, what it's like to have a competition on the screen. So anyways I'll click back on run. And while that's running, you can look over here in the upper right-hand corner and see our population size, our average fitnesses, metabolic rates, gestations, and ages of avidians. So we're about 300 generations in. Uh, you can also see down here in our map that we can track all of our stats, our fitness, our gestation, our age, our metabolic rate. And what's happening right now is usually a few generations in somewhere. Well, I've had it happen as quickly as 200 generations and as slowly as thousands of generations. Some of Indians are going to be doing better than others. Oh, and here comes our color change, which means somebody's doing a little bit better. So I'm going to pause the run. And what you can do now is you can click on individual Avidians and get their stats. So if I want to click on this little guy who is relatively fit in the grand scheme of things, I click right on him, and over here it'll give me their exact information. But I want to run this a little bit longer to see if we can get some functions to arise. And we have over here. I'm going to pause it again. And you'll notice that five of our little digital organisms have evolved this new function to break down the NAN sugar, um, which is going to make them a little more fit. So my assumption, and we'll find out here, is we'll click on NAN, and NAN will highlight on the screen, or the little box will highlight on the screen the Avidians that have gotten that. And sure enough, these are our more fit guys down here. They've all evolved the NAN function. So there's their NAN+. plus. So as we run it on out a little bit further, well, a knot has shown up, so we have some knot and some nan. 
And the longer you run, the better chance you have of being able to develop some of these higher functioning um, metabolic processes. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below, and thanks for trying something new.